Thank you for downloading from the BBC. For details of our complete range of podcasts and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts. Hello, this is Matthew Bannister with Outlook from the BBC World Service. On today's programme, a lesbian from Sri Lanka tells how she married a British wheelchair user to avoid her parents' pressure to have an arranged marriage. She explains their reaction when she told them. The fact that he was a wheelchair user being a problem didn't even cross my mind. I thought they would object because he is British, he's white. It's when I told them that I was going to get married to Nick that I realised that in their minds the fact that he was disabled somehow was a bigger problem than the fact that he was white. And Witness looks back 50 years to British protests against racial discrimination. It was a very hard time. Apart from not being able to get a job... Couldn't get a house, couldn't get lodgings, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, no children. Couldn't go into a pub without the say-so of the manager. It was de facto segregation. Your message is welcome, as always, by email to outlook at bbc.com or you can post on our Facebook page. But first, businessman Nino De Massi and his father Giuseppe are well known in Calabria in southern Italy for standing up to the local mafia. The region is notoriously dominated by the Andragheta, who, which in recent years has become even more powerful than the Sicilian Mafia. The family company, which makes agricultural machinery, works in construction and has recently expanded into containers, celebrates its 60th anniversary next year. Both father and son have been targeted ever since it came to the notice of local organised crime. But a few weeks ago, the threats were dramatically stepped up and Nino is now under 24-hour police protection. On the phone from his office, Nino told me about the latest threat. So on the night of the 12th of April, 44 AK-47 bullets were fired in front of one of my companies and two unexploded cartridges were left at the doors of one of the hangars. And what did you interpret this as meaning? The weapon they used, the technique they used, is not a common one even for uh, the Ndrangheta, the local mafia in these territories. Uh, It's a military weapon, AK-47s are used by the army. So I believe the message is very clear and is a threatening signal towards me, my family and my company. Why would they have left two unexploded cartridges? This was the final message and this clearly means those cartridges are for you. Have you taken new precautions for your safety and the safety of your family? It's not me who took measures, it's the Italian government. We've been put under around-the-clock protection by the police. Our company is now surveilled by the army. A couple of soldiers are constantly in front of our company and I'm always travelling in armoured vehicles with two policemen accompanying me. That must have a terrible effect on your life. How does it feel to be under that kind of guard? It really changes your life. I mean, you can't go for a walk with your children, you can't really enjoy any private moment with your family, but unfortunately that's how reality is and I have to take account of this situation and I have to look forward. Now, you and your family have been standing up to the local mafia, the Ndrangheta, for years. Why do you think that the level of threat has been stepped up now? It's been 40 years that we're opposing the Ndrangheta. We even received bombs, anonymous letters, but such a, a clear threat for us was unprecedented, if you want. I think the reason behind it is they want to take control of our companies. But what alternatives do we have? There there is an alternative, but we don't want to consider it. 
The alternative would be to give in and to close our companies, to sell our companies to the crime. But when I went to speak to the police authorities and the government authorities in, our, in my home region, they said to me, Mr. De Masi, you can't close your company. Your company is the image of a clean Calabria. It's the image of clean entrepreneurship in the region. If you close, it's not going to be a defeat only for you, but for the whole local community and for society at large in this area. So we are keeping our companies running even at risk of our own life. Are there particular activities, business activities, that you're involved in in the port of uh, Gioia Taro which come into conflict with the business activities of the Mafia? For uh, four or five weeks, we've launched a new activities in our companies, which is maintaining and storing containers. And this is what probably caused a big problem to the local mafia. Why would that cause a problem? For example, because... Because, for instance, I believe that us maintaining and storing containers wouldn't allow local mafia to keep doing some kind of trafficking with those containers, for example, drug trafficking. I understand. Well, I wonder if I could speak to your father, Giuseppe. Is he on the line too? Uh, Your fight with the Ndrangheta started many years ago... Do you remember when you first took a stand? What was it that, that forced you to take a stand? Ndrangheta is always looking for new entrepreneurs, for uh, new companies to go and ask for uh, payments, extortion demands. So when I started my company, I always tried not to give in to such pressures, even though they put bombs, even though I received all kinds of threats. I always try to stand firm. Why did you decide to do that? Because many people in the region simply give in and pay up the protection money, don't they? Well, I would have a lot of stories to tell in this respect. I only can tell you that I didn't want to become slave of such a coward and dishonest people. So I'm 80 years old now. I'm proud of myself, of what I've done. So many times those criminals came to me and said to me, you know, Mr. De Masi, we could do this and that. And my reply was always, listen, I'm an entrepreneur, you're doing another job. We don't have anything to do with each other, so please leave me alone. Is it true that they actually blew up your house? They didn't only blow up my house. Once they blew up a vehicle that a commercial vehicle that I was uh, using, a German commercial vehicle, and by a matter of seconds, one of my children wasn't killed. He went past with his motorbike and he really escaped this attack by a matter of seconds. So they blew up my house, they burned a couple of times my house at the seaside and I received so many attacks, so many threats. The issue is the gangs come to you and they say... If you want, I can look for the people who carried out such attacks and I can, uh, you know, kill them and you can come and bury them if you want. But I, I'm tired of these things. I'm tired of the culture that this territory has. So I, I always stood firm. I want to stress how the responsibility is also from politicians. A lot of politicians are corrupt and are part of the mafia system. I mean, when we took up this job at the Gioia Tauro port, after a couple of days, they carried out this attack with the AK-47 bullets. Why should they put my son and my family under protection rather than go to those who did it, they know who they are, and put them in jail. The problem here is that we don't have the rule of law. Nino, what was it like to grow up against this background of threats and violence? It's awful. It's like being in a war zone. You can't lead a normal life. You can't run companies as you would do in any other place. This is, unfortunately, the reality of some parts of southern Italy. I'm risking my life. I'm risking my family's life. We don't only have to denounce such threats and to criminalise a territory. We have to give a future to this territory. 
Uh, Giuseppe, back in the 1990s, you, you got together with the authorities and, and dozens of gangsters were arrested and convicted. Did you think that that would be the end of the matter? I've always talked to the authorities. I had uh, one of the local policemen who was my confessor. I would go every week to him and I would tell him everything that I knew about local crimes, about the threats that I was undergoing. But the issue is the Italian justice knows who these criminals are and they only act when there is a murder. They put them in jail, but then most of the times they are released. So, I mean, here in, in Calabria, the situation is so complicated. It is such a mess that it would take me a lot of time to tell you things that you cannot even imagine. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm now 80. The only thing that worries me is my children. My son that you're speaking to now is always coming to have lunch with us and dinner with us. I'm, I'm very worried about what can happen to him. And Nino, is it true to say that there are certain people in the local community who ostracise you, who, who don't speak to you because of the stand that you've taken against the Andrangheta? This territory is under control by the Ndrangheta, the local crime. So there is a, an underlying culture of uh, collaboration with the crime. And what we did as a family is being considered by the local community as something that needs to be condemned. We are treated like spies, like friends of the police, as if it were a bad thing to do, speaking to the local authorities and saying, you know, what's happening to us and denouncing the threats that we underwent. We are treated like infamous persons. And, you know, the amazing thing is that against this background, you've managed to run a successful business. How do you do it? If it depended on me, I and my family could pack and go away immediately. But I'm staying here because I want to be a witness, a witness of the fact that justice can win even in this territory, even in a territory controlled by crime. I'm not a hero. I'm just doing what any entrepreneur would do. But what I want to, to stress is that in an area where, as my, my father was saying, politics and politicians have strong relationships with local crime, there's still the possibility of winning. And this can be done by being a serious and honest person. Nino De Masi and his father Giuseppe speaking to me from Calabria in Italy.